Hey, it's Wabbit. Well, it happened. Final Cut Pro and Logic coming to the iPad. I don't think it's a big shock to some of us. It was just a matter of time. Uh, a couple things that I think are important. First of all, this is not a fool's joke. Uh, I do have, excuse me, I do have Apple's website pulled up. This is a little spiel about Final Cut Pro for the iPad. Also, Logic Pro as well, too. Uh, big shocker, this is going to be a subscription model. So you pay $4.99 a month if you want that option, or you do the $49 annually. Uh, available May 23rd of 2023. And the other thing is going to be in terms of what gear will work in terms of the iPad. So according to Apple, um, and again, all these things are always subject to change, so take everything that I say based on the time of the recording, uh, Final Cut Pro is compatible with M1 chip iPad models or later. And Logic Pro will be available on A12 Bionic chip iPad models or later. Um, and then Final Cut Pro for the iPad and Logic Pro for the iPad will require iPad OS 16.4. So, and again, there's probably a lot more. I'm not going to go into details. Uh, the other big question is going to be, you know, AUV3 plugins. Will all those work? One, I don't know that we all have the answers at the time of this recording. If you go to their website, it does show in Logic Pro using AUV3s. Like, I think my big question is going to be just in terms of are those AU, excuse me, AUV3s going to be compatible with the latest version of iOS that is required? Um, and then for those that want to use Final Cut Pro, if you have any plugins, are they going to be uh, able to work on M1 chips or later. So there's just a lot of unknown, and I, I think you know, there's always questions, this or that. Um, so we'll just have to kind of watch the space and, and kind of see how that plays out. So a couple thoughts, and I want to just throw a little bit of logic out here, uh, pun intended on that, um, because you're going to hear a lot of noise. There's going to be a lot of reaction. There already is. People are going to say what you should do, what you shouldn't do. And my suggestion is to ignore all that. And yet here I'm going to give you some advice. <laughs> so I, I, I completely get the hypocrisy in, in, in the statement and what I'm about to continue on with. So I think the best course of action is take a look at what you are doing. Do you have something that gets the job done for you? Are you completely happy with what you have? If you are, then there really is no need for you to do this to, in reality. If you've got a DAW, if you've got a video editor that you're just struggling with and you're tired of it, it's frustrating, it's impeding whatever you're doing, then absolutely. Go to the website, do some reading, again, time of recording, if you want to take the approach of, well, you know, there's going to be some bugs. Let me let other people do, uh, be the guinea pigs and test it out. That's completely understandable as well, too. I don't think there's any really right or, or wrong answer. The only clear-cut answer is if money's no issue for you, then you're going to do this. Because I think that's an important point, especially for those who want to use Final Cut Pro. You've got to have an M1 chip iPad, period. So if you don't have that, Final Cut Pro is not an option. And I, and I think this is a genius part on Apple, knowing that there are people who've been wanting this stuff or both of these. Now, the, the money is obviously going to be an issue. I mean, if we take a look at Final Cut Pro, again, time of this recording, for the desktop, it'll set you back $299. Logic Pro will set you back $199. There's $500 bucks right there. Now, the other thing I think it's important, uh, the latest version of Logic Logic 10 was released in 2013. The latest version of Final Cut Pro was released in 2011. So there's been a long uh, run on these desktop apps, and each update since then has been free. And I think one of the big questions is going to be, what's going to happen to let's just say Logic Pro 11 and Final Cut Pro 11. Are they going to be the same price point? Is Apple going to put those in a subscription model? Because we know that's their plan. It's not about hardware. 
So for anyone out there wanting Apple, and including myself, wanting Apple to make music gear, it's not happening. The money is in the subscription model, period. They, I don't, let me be careful how I say this. I don't want to say that Apple started the subscription model, but a lot of companies are following. They see that, and, and they've, they've got us. They've got me. <laughs> We're in that ecosystem. I've got an iPad. I've got an iPhone. And they know. Apple's not dumb. They know that that the community wanted this. I, I saw people talking about it. And, oh, it's never going to happen. We knew it would happen. It was just a matter of time. And and the shock about a subscription model, to me, I just kind of laugh. That just means people aren't paying attention to what's going on. And the choice is obvious. You don't have to buy it if it bothers you. I mean, that, 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 that to me is a, a clear one. So personally, I have the desktop. I was a student at the time when I got Logic Pro and Final Cut Pro. I do my editing in Final Cut Pro. And that's just a decision I will have to make. Like I said earlier, what happens to the desktop version? Personally, I'm not a fan of subscription models. I also use LumaFusion on the iPad. Uh, it works for me. I like both. And I don't know what's going to happen down the road. Uh, the other part for me, reality, is as I get closer to retirement, those are things I have to kind of keep in mind. So if I did not have Logic Pro or Final Cut Pro, then this would be a great entry point because when you do the math, it's going to get you a good five years. Again, going based on the price of what things are with the desktop, but we don't know what's going to happen down the road. And, and that's one thing that I try and avoid is worrying about the future. So in the moment, for me, I don't need it, but I know that others will be using it. And, and I think that's really the big takeaway. I should not be bothered by what other people do. It's not going to affect me. We can all give our little thoughts and, and comments what we think. At the end of the day, we work with what we have and try and spend more time creating and less time hating. Anyway, that's my thought. Um, to me, I, I really like how Apple did it, to be honest with you. It was just a simple video on YouTube. That's how I found this out. It wasn't this big fanfare. Uh, even did this before WWDC. So kudos to them for not making a big deal about it. And uh, if it's something that's going to work for you, give it a shot. You've got a free month you can try. And you might find out that this is a great opportunity or option, or you may hate it. I mean, that's just the way it, way it works. And I think for those of us who are in that department of getting close to retirement, there's always going to be garage bay. <laughs> and I think that's what's going to happen to me. I'm, I'm going to wind up being that greeter at some store because I got to work till I'm 80. And I, I won't be able to afford subscription models, but there'll be good old garage band where I can put some cheesy beat together. <laughs> anyway, whatever you decide to do, if you get it, I hope you have fun with it. If you don't, have fun with what you have. It's really not rocket science. Thanks for watching. If you've made it this far, please be safe out there. Keep your head on a swivel. And until next time, Sissy Hodo.